everyone. It's Turner from John's Furniture here. Yay, yay. And I have a lot of furniture here that I have to do for one job. It's a big one. We've got a china cabinet with a sideboard. We've got another sideboard. And we've got a table. They're all from different eras. They're all different colors. we got to make them one color and make them work together. Let me show you some details. Okay, starting with the oldest, the table. I believe it's probably from the 20s. It's got some very nice carved claw feet here. It's a nice oak table, but the top's got a few issues. We've got a couple of splits that aren't supposed to be there, and it just needs a general refinish. One of the leaves is quite warped, and I don't think this is actually an original leaf, and we're not actually fixing the warp. She didn't want to go for that, but we do have an original leaf, and it's in good shape. Second, from the 80s, I presume, this oak sideboard and china with view very outdated handles and an outdated look. And it's got all the inside that we have to change the color on as well. So nothing wrong with this piece. It just needs to be updated and brought in line with the rest of them. And then we have brand new, made I think a few months ago, a sideboard. It is oak and it's completely raw. We have to give it a prep sand and match it to everything else. But I'm gonna start with the table because that is the color, whatever I can get to with this one, that we're gonna to have to go to with the other two. As you can see, this is really light. This is really orange. That is really orange. And she wants a color that's very neutral. So basically like a weathered oak kind of look. So, first of all, we gotta get this all stripped down. Let's start with the table and get to work. After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop. And after 25 years, I can truly say, I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300 year old hand carved piece of history or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna and this is John's Furniture Repair. Thought I'd start there and now we can get onto this table and it's got a split along this whole side here and everything else seems to be okay so what I've done is taken out the corner blocks from the tracks to the piece uh, taking out this screw here and then taking out a couple of the skirt screws so I should be able to get this piece to slide out there. So this is like a tongue and groove style of situation for the lamination here. So I can't put this through the jointer. What I'm going to do is just clean up all the old glue off of this and everything that's gotten stuck on the top of this and then re-glue it on while it's still on the table here. And then we'll just have to reposition the screws because it's going to come in uh, probably like a 16th to an 8th inch. So... That's the first thing I'm gonna do with this. So I'm gonna flip it over now so that I can clean off the groove on the top here too. And again, this has like a lot of, of garbage here so that would never really come together unless I could get it to clean out. Clean it out. 
So I grab my little scraper. And every time I use this scraper, um, I get comments. Where did you get this thing? What's it called? It's just called a scraper. And I get this at Lee Valley. So you can go online and, and go search scrapers and it'll pop up. And it has a triangle, a circle, and a square that you can pop on these guys. And you can get new blades for them as well. So this is my favorite scraper so far. It's really small, it gets into places, and seems to be uh, really stay sharp for a really long time. So I'm gonna scrape away this edge here because it is full of stuff. Probably like from food stuff as well as, you know, just whatever gets stuck in between the old glue, oils, cleaning solution, maybe some ketchup, who knows. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean it all out and then I'll do that on the uh, leaves are the piece here as well. Okay, so I've got those all cleaned out. I've got tape here that I can remove after the glue up is done for any squeeze out. Before I get to it, I'm gonna elongate these holes Oftentimes when these tables shrink and we've not given enough room in the fastening situation for that movement, that's why it happens. So before I put this all back over, I'm gonna basically be elongating the hole like this so that when the wood moves back and forth this way, the screw will move in the hole back and forth with it. So I'm just gonna take a bit and elongate it with the uh, uh, perpendicular to the grain here. Same with this one. There, and that'll just help it if there is a little bit of movement again to not get all stuck. Okay, so I've got everything ready to go. We're just gonna get some uh, carpenter's glue on here. And we're not gonna use a lot because that just makes a mess. And they want it in that groove and then just a little bit on the face. Alrighty, so we're ready to pop this guy in. So we've got this glued back together. The seam looks really good here. Just a couple of voids where there was some wood missing at the end. And so now we're just gonna strip this all down. I'm gonna flip it over and do the, the skirt first and then the top and uh, give it a good sand. Okay, so I've got the skirt all stripped. I turned the table upside down for that. And another thing I like to check on tables is how much grime has built up right where the seam is when it's together. A lot of times stuff will spill or crumbs will get stuck and it's sticky. So I'm gonna clean up the tops of these guys. And also if you look in between the table, a lot of crud gets stuck along this edge. And so it's really important to clean that right off because it's full of stuff that you just don't want in there. This one's got quite a bit of it. So we'll get that all cleaned up in the edge. Then we can just strip the top and this table top will almost be good.
Okay, so we've got both sides stripped and steamed, so little dense mix that are just compressed wood. Uh, we won't have to sand that deep of, and get most of those out. And I did put a little bit of epoxy putty in our seam because there was a few areas where there was wood missing. So that's sitting there. And then this little corner here was broken, so we've just got a bit of clamps on here getting that back together. So while this dries, we're gonna get onto the pedestal and I'm gonna take the feet off because it's much easier to deal with it that way. So let's flip it upside down and I'll show you how those are attached. Okay, so you can see inside here, there's um, a dowel on the top and a bolt on the bottom. So I need to get these loose and then give this leg a little smack and it should just come out. So I'm gonna use a adjustable wrench just to get in there because it's really tight and there's square nuts. You can't get a socket in there. So I don't know if this one's big enough, but we'll see if I can get it turned out. They're usually a big pain in the butt, but it's much more of a pain in the butt trying to strip this whole thing with them on. So I'll get those off. So we've got this whole table stripped and sanded up to 120. And I'm thinking because the color is so light, I'm probably gonna have to use a couple of different types of bleach. Um, this is the color they want here. It's a really neutral, kind of a whitewashed color over top of just raw um, oak. And because this oak is stained, uh, we can't get all of the color out of the grain, so in some areas you get a really black grain coming through here. There's no black grain in this sample piece. So the only way to lighten that up a little bit is with a regular household bleach um, or pool bleach if you want to go really um, toxic. But um, the other one is, look how yellow and orange that is. So we have to remove the natural color of this wood with a two-part bleach. And... Uh, because the regular household bleach won't do anything to remove the, the natural color in the wood. So we have to use a wood bleach and a household bleach and hopefully get a little bit closer to a neutral zone to be able to bring this color um, into this whole piece because it's a lot more orangey 
and black and yellow. So we have to remove all of those colors before we can even start to think about putting an actual color on this thing. So the bleach is all dry and crystallized, so I'm going to rinse it with a mixture of water and vinegar. Pretty much one to one. Anyways, and do not skip this step because if you've ever had bleach, and I've talked about this before, get on your clothes. It'll actually eat a hole right in your clothes. And wood is a fiber. So if you do not rinse bleach and neutralize that bleach off of your wood, it will soften the first layer of wood that it has touched and it'll get all pungy and soft and your finish will not stick to that. And it'll just kind of deteriorate away. So make sure you're neutralizing if you're using any type of bleach. A lot of the two-part wood bleaches are self-neutralizing, which is nice, but I always read to check if that is the case. So this did lighten it a little bit. It's more of a light brown now than a black green. So I'm gonna be satisfied with that and go on to my two part wood bleach now. After I get a good rinse and dry on this. So later today I'll be able to do that. And hopefully we can get a lot of this yellow up. and go from there. Okay, so the uh, household regular bleach, pool bleach, whatever it was I put on there is dry. And now we wanna go in with our two-part wood bleach to remove the yellow tone of the wood. And I'm gonna be using Gaudi's bleaching system here. They sent this to me a while ago because they're awesome. So it's four parts to one. So I'm just gonna do one big batch here because I have a lot of bleaching to do. four of these. All right, that is a lot of wood bleach. So I'm going to be doing probably two coats on everything in the china cabinet that we're stripping and the table and all the legs and the doors and everything. So um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a stir here. I'm really hoping we can get rid of a lot of this color. I'm 
a lot of these neutral um, tones are so popular, popular right now, and wood is really not any of those neutral tones. Wood is yellow, wood is red, dark brown, very yellow, and people are just loving the gray tones and all the neutrals and the paint washes that you see online and stuff like that. But it's really kind of doing something that wood doesn't naturally do. So it's a lot more work to go through removing all the natural colors. Now this leaf is lighter than the two sides of the table, so we'll probably only do one coat of bleach on this one. And I'm pretty sure I'll be doing bleach toning, which is a spray on kind of a whitewash, but a very translucent whitewash just to further quiet the wood grain. Good morning, we are here working on the last part, this china cabinet, I've got the back panel off. And um, I just wanted to show you a new product that I was sent. And I've been looking for something like this before. I used to have a little um, pen light that I would um, use to get into to little spaces, a lot of times in cabinets and around corners where I can't quite see what's good. So for this one, obviously the back is off here, but a lot of times seeing behind um, a corner into these dark spots is quite difficult. This one's okay because I've got the back off, but um, part of this um, whole unit that we're doing, this whole set, is this piece here. And you can see in here, I can't take these cubbies apart to get in here. So I really do need to light up these areas to make sure that I'm getting the finish in. We haven't done this piece yet, but we're getting onto it. So I'm really happy to be working with Olight. Um, I was just Googling some lights that I could get for mounting on my, like on my headband or even just having it handheld. And these guys found me and sent me a couple of lights here and I'll show you these. Just let me get you set up here so I can use my hands. Okay, so these guys, this isn't a Tim Hortons commercial, sorry, is um, they, they have a whole bunch of different work lights and safety lights and all kinds of stuff. So they sent me a couple of these. I haven't opened them yet, so I'll just do this together with you. Really nice packaging too. So you just pull this tab, slide it open. 
And here is the light. So this one is called the Arc Field. And they're supposed to be really bright. It looks nice. So this is, I think it has a laser as well as a light. So it's nice for when I'm trying to point at something for you guys on YouTube. I don't have to like point with my finger. I can point with my light here and show you a little bit better. Hopefully in the future that looks good. So this looks like a charge cord. Yeah, with a little USB hookup. So this, you can charge this guy. It's not a battery operated thing. So that's kind of nice. This is cool, it's magnetic. So it just charges on your USB, hook it into wherever you can. So that's cool. I'm excited to use this one. Anyways, I need to sand this guy. Um, I've got it all stripped, which took quite a while to get um, all sides of everything in here. So I'm just gonna sand everything and then bleach it. This is my last piece that I have to bleach. And uh, we are good to go for color. I had my customer come in actually, and she had a color, which I showed you guys a couple of times, that um, she gave me a sample. And if you remember, this is the sample here. It doesn't look like it on camera, but when I held, when I used the stain to get this color, it looked super pink. And so I was really worried. I called her and I said, listen, I don't want to give you a giant pink dining room suite back. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. So she came back and we had a couple samples and we landed on a really whitewashed, uh, grayed out um, weathered oak color. And so this is actually bleached whitewashed and then a gray um, stain that's barely a stain over top of that. And what I mean by that is I'm using Minwax, which I do not like this stain, but for certain things, it's perfect because it's a barely a color. And what I need on this piece is a barely color. Now, I feel like Minwax, and if you love Minwax, just ignore me, it's fine. If it's working for you, cool. But in a professional setting, when I look at this, tone here that's what I expect when I put it on furniture it doesn't do that this is probably 95% solvent and then 5% colorant colorant is the expensive part so a lot of companies that are in a lot of big box stores they try to make things uh, super cheap and just use as little amount of colorant as possible you can get more color with your sanding so if you leave your sanding to like 100 grit or 120 grit you can get more color of this because obviously your fibers of your wood are going to stick up and catch more but if you're going to actually prep your wood to 180 like i do you're barely going to get any color out of this because it's just solvent it's just going to wipe right off so in certain instances that's what i want so i do keep a couple of them on hand just because they're more more of like a glaze than anything and they don't sink into the wood very much so that's what we're going to be doing on this set and it's really nice um i like it it's lost all that yellow orange tone that the 80s loved so much um and to compare to that you know it's really different this is very pink so i'm excited to do that color anyways i'm gonna get to setting that piece and then we can get on to color okay so i've just got this piece lightly sanded and i'm ready for color so i'm going to start off with uh lenmar's um lacquer wiping stain which I don't know why it's called that. It's basically just a solvent based stain. So I'm gonna pop this on first and then we're gonna, on top of that, like I said before, put the uh, crappy Minwax glaze over it just to give it a little bit of a shift to a gray tone. So let's get at that. And I'm gonna let the whitewash dry for a little bit. So I'll do the whole thing in whitewash first and let it dry for a second and then come back with the gray color over top. And this looks really white at first, but it does soak in and let the color of the wood come through.
All right, so we've got everything under stain. It's over here in the spray booth area, just drying. Everything is looking pretty good. The um, oldest piece we had to bleach twice. Uh, the piece from the 80s we just did once, um, but it looks good. It has a little bit more yellow than this older piece. It really uh, bleached up nice, mostly because it's nicer wood. But I think everything is in the range of acceptable, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little while just because it did get two coats of stain and the oil or solvent base, not the solvent base, but the Minwax takes a long time to dry. So while that's drying, we're on to the new piece that was made. And I've just been sanding and masking off because it has been sitting in uh, her home for a while. So we just need to re-sand everything, make sure it's all cleaned up, there aren't any scratches, um, oil marks, finger marks, all that kind of stuff because raw wood does soak all that in and it'll affect the stain. So I'm just gonna be sanding everything, prepping. I was thinking about taking those back panels off or this back panel off because it is screws so that would be a little bit easier for the cubby holes and the uh, door areas so i'll probably do that and yeah just get everything prepped and and i'm gonna have to play with the stain i might have to stain this darker first and then do the process so i'll bring you along with that because that'll be a little bit complicated Alrighty, so i was doing some color tests with a couple of different things here and I'm just realizing that this is going to be too pink. We need to start from more of a yellow whitish base. So it looks like I'm going to have to bleach this whole cabinet as well. So um, this color, you know, getting rid of the pink, I have to use green which darkens it and you do have that tone going on but I just need that really white background so I can't use these dark colors. So we're going to mix up a batch of bleach and give every outer area a coat, which will be really annoying in those cubby holes. Those are like not a fun situation. Um, and then we won't do the inside of the drawers, but everything else will get a coat of bleach. Okay, so we're working on the stain. It's pretty complicated and I'll tell you why. If you look at this piece, um, this is a refinished piece, which is always different than finishing a new never stained piece because of, as you can see, the grain has kept all out of the stain color. We can't get that out, so that stays, but the rest of the wood bleached up right nice and white. So getting that on new pieces where the grain isn't saturated with a dark stain is pretty difficult and not completely um, doable, but we can get it pretty close where we can make it look like it's supposed to be the same. So the very first thing we want to do is use a very light stain, which is mostly a wood conditioner, which I told you before, the Minwax stuff is basically just 95% solvent, um, usually like black, not lacquer thinner, but um, paint thinner, mineral spirits base. So it's not going to sink into the wood it's not going to make it super dark which for people who don't really know how to prep wood really well that's why these stains are so popular because they don't um they're a little easier to use they don't blotch as much as as uh, other stains do that have a lot of colorant so i'm going to put this on the whole thing and this is going to sink into the grain for one thing and give it a little bit of color not quite enough but it's also going to coat this wood surface with, or saturate the wood surface, I should say, with um, Varsol or Mineral Spirits or whatever the, the uh, carrier is for this stuff. I haven't looked it up. Which is gonna barrier my grain color stain. So I'm gonna wipe that off. Not totally, but just enough. And then I'm gonna come in with a very diluted um, black gouty stain that I'm gonna to use to really get into that grain. And I'm gonna wipe that off right away. Because I don't want it sitting on the surface at all.
just want it in the grain. So now that that's on there, I'm gonna come back with a little bit of Varsol and I'm gonna scrub off the surface. all of that stain in there. And because we had that Minwax stain with all of the solvent first, it hasn't really penetrated into the wood like it would if we just, you could use a wood conditioner to do this. But I like that little bit of gray color help in the, in the grain as well, because that's the color we're using. So now we've got a piece with some color in the grain, not quite as much as the original, but some. Again, the original is different wood as well. It's got bigger grain patterns, so that's gonna be different too. So now that we have that, we're gonna let it dry a little bit. Okay, so it's dried a short while. Now you can see on this one, there's like a white hazy color. We really need to get that out. So we're gonna go ahead and do our white over top of everything. What, meow meow? You miss nap time? Shop Kitty misses Shop Dog because she's off getting a haircut today. So she's a little bit upset. So we'll just get that all over the piece. This is gonna be a really big pain in the butt to stain. Good thing I don't have to do it to three pieces. It's always tough matching new wood to old wood. That, so we've got a little bit of that white haze going on now. And then one more step, this is way too many steps in my opinion, but this is how I got it to work, is again, we come in with that weathered oak minwax, just to deepen and soften that white a little bit. and just barely wipe that off. Oops. So that we get that kind of a warmth coming through there. Now, I might have to bleach tone a little bit because this is a little bit whiter, but I think I'm actually gonna tone this a little bit warmer into this zone because I like this warmth a little bit more than this really, really white. But once we get a clear coat on, all of this is gonna shift a little bit so we can see. But that is gonna be the process to get these guys to be in the same family. And uh, they won't be exactly the same, but we're gonna get them to work together and hopefully look like everything is cohesive at the end. So that's what I'm gonna do to everything, including those dumb little cubby holes that I'm really not enjoying working on. So once those are done, then we're going to let them dry for a day because this is a lot of stain process for, for wood and uh, maybe even two days. And then we'll see where we're at with the clear coat on everything.
right, as I'm working around here, I'm remembering a few um, comments and questions people have asked me about methods and staining and such. So I'll answer them while I'm working here. Um, one person, or actually not one, many people have asked me, why are you so hard on your brushes going sideways, not doing nice, even brush strokes? So the only place that nice, even brush strokes are really important are when you're putting your finish on. It does not matter if you are using a wiping stain, what the heck you do with your brush. You can go sideways, you can go this way, you can go like that if you want, but just let me show you something. If I'm just brushing like this, do you see how much material is left right here? It's just running down. I mostly turn my brush sideways to redistribute the stain. So when I come across here like this, I'm re uh, stringing out that brush full of stain farther on the piece instead of just brushing across and having way uh, extra material here that I can reuse and redistribute across the whole thing and save some stain. So that is why I use my stain brushes like that. If I was br if I were brushing varnish, obviously I would be you know more carefully moving across the piece because that's my finish. That you have to make sure you be careful about the brush strokes. Stain's going to get wiped off. Just get the color on, wipe it off. It does not matter what you do with your brush at this point. Unless you're using a color mixed with a finish, go nuts, people. Whatever you can do to pick up stain and redistribute it and save some money on buying a whole another quart of stain because you've used most of it and just wiped it off with a rag. I mean, the other thing is you're saving on rags because you can go through a lot. If you're just gonna pile the stain on, you're always filling up your rags full of stain. Use as much as you can so you don't have to just pick it up in your rag and throw it out because that's not useful. So I am just putting on this green color right over without wiping off in between because it is really helping on these vertical surfaces to keep the color just fluid and not sinking into the wood, just the grain. So the other thing that I do get quite often and I don't appreciate is really, um, I guess rude comments, and I know most of you don't do this, so I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to a few people out there who decide that their opinion is the most important on what should be done with other people's furniture. You can keep that to yourself. These are my customers who pay me to do their furniture and what they want done to their furniture is the most important thing to me. I don't care if they want me to paint it. I don't care if they want me to stain it a weird color. There are times when what I'm doing is not what I think the customer actually wants and it's what they picked. In this instance, I called her and she changed her, her color and I can understand that, but when they want what they want, that is my job and that is what they pay me for to just make it look the way that they want it to look. So if it's not your furniture, you can kindly say, hmm, not something I would pick, but it looks really good and happy it's theirs. That's pretty much the scope of what I uh, can, I guess, tolerate on the comments because it, I delete a lot of them because my customers are really important to me and it's it would be really hard for them to see, you know, their choices blasted on the internet. I would not appreciate that if I was a person getting something done. So just be kind. Most of you are wonderful, kind people, but a few of you need to be a little bit more kind to my clients. So anyways, this color looks really nice. Um, and I like how the, the tone in the wood has turned out. So I've got all of the first two stages of the color on, and now we have to go over with our white wash. So um, I have to take off a bit of that color on that side. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit, and I can probably start on the top already. 
getting the whitewash on and uh, see how it starts to look there. Alrighty, so I finally got this thing all stained up. And I just have one of the other, um, from the other china cabinet sitting here just to compare. And yes, it has darker green and more figure. Um, but if we step back away, I think they all kind of work in the same family, which is what I'm going for. So I'm going to roll this thing over to the booth so it can go ahead and dry with all the rest of the stuff. And I might throw a couple clear coats on the other things that have been drying for a couple days already. So um, this was a lot of work for not being a refinish just to get it to uh, meet up with everything else, bleaching and a four part stain series and everything. So uh, sometimes it's not so easy, but I think we got there and uh, everything is looking really good and I can finally roll this on over. Okay, so last night I ended up putting on a coat of clear on the other stuff. You can see here. All needs a good sand and it just brought out the color I didn't do this one because it needed to dry but you can see here on the table it just brought out a little bit of warmth but I think I'm gonna be adding a very interesting color by Mohawk which is called morel like the mushroom and it's a toner and it's a really you can see the color here and I'll spray it on something. Kind of like a gray, mousy brown. Let me just spray it on something and I'll show you. Mousy brown, kind of gray, but a little bit of warmth to it. Kind of like the color that we were staining with. So I kind of want to put everything through that filter, which just means putting a very thin uh, tint coat over. And I don't like to tint entire sets with spray bombs because that's not really what they're for. They're for touch-ups, but when it's a weird color like that and I can just get away with using a couple of bombs instead of mixing it myself, um, and I don't want to use the Minwax stuff anymore because it takes forever to dry then I'm gonna use the spray bombs. So I'm gonna sand everything I've sprayed last night um, and get one uh, coat of la uh, clear on the last piece and then start tinting with that color. And I did it a little bit on this foot so you can see here, just gives it a little bit of a warm tinge compared to this one, which is a little bit cooler. So it's a very small shift, but enough of a shift that I think it's worth it. So anyways, I'll get to sanded. All right, so we got the clear coat on this piece. Those were tricky, but I think we got them okay. Came from the back and the front to get as much as I could in there. Did two coats on the top. I always do two coats to start off before any sanding. And got the inside of the drawers sealed once. I'll do another coat. Everything needs a little bit of touch-ups everywhere. 
but I'm really happy. I think these guys are done. Now, I do have these little pinholes that I didn't wanna fill before we had a finished coat on them, so I do have to deal with those, and I might have to do one more coat on the top of these, but that's okay. Because um, those pinholes are from the old hardware, and they're on those, the drawers for that guy, and the doors, so I need to deal with those little holes here. And then also, this one had a hole drilled wrong at some point, so I'll fix that too before the final coat on those. And that's just so the putty doesn't sink into any of the grain and make it look weird right there. So I'll be able just to get it in the holes and nowhere else. This piece is done. I'll probably do a little bit of buffing on the top, but it looks good. So yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it overnight. Um, the table, I, I always like to do a final cut down on the leaf and the table and get that a little smoother. We are dealing with some contamination, so a little bit of orange peel finish here. So I wanna get that nice and flat. And uh, this piece is also done. So yeah, it looks pretty good. I will get back at it tomorrow when everything's dry, give it a good sand, and I should be able to finish this ginormous job. Okay, so this is really coming together. I've got the final coat on the table. Still lots of good oak texture, but a little bit less orange peel. And I've got the new piece all tinted with the morale. And I've got it next to the older piece here, just so you can see the difference. Now this gets a, a hutch on top, so we only really see about this much of the top, this first strip here. So those two together, I think will look pretty good. But of course, the grain on the older piece is much blacker. We did get a little bit of that going on in the front frame pieces here with a little bit more of a loud green. So when you do stand, and when they're all put together, stand back, you will see that they are in the same family. So everything is looking really nice. I've loved that morale color. It adds a nice warmth to everything. So yeah, I'm just gonna let everything dry and once it's all dry i'll get it all put together so the next time you see me i think it'll be done but yeah i'm really liking how everything's looking so almost finished this big one all right so i finally got this um arc field flashlight slash laser pointer charged up looks really good so i'm just going to press the center button here you can see the laser Pointer. It's going to be really helpful uh, pointing out stuff in videos that I'm trying to show you. Small things you can really, you know, get in there and point at stuff that I'm talking about. And all you got to do to switch it over to the flashlight is pop that over. And it's not super bright, but it looks, you know, it's also very bright in here right now, so I don't really need a light. But it looks like it'll be pretty handy, just like a pen light is. So. Yeah, that's really cool. And it does have a little clip that I can pop on my um, pants or on my shirt or whatever, or my apron, so I can keep that around with me. And you just turn it off. You have to hold it. And there you go. So that's really cool. I think I need to charge it a little bit more, maybe a brighter. Now the other little box that um, they sent me, not going to necessarily need it too much in the shop. This is a safety light and it has a couple of cool features. So you just hold it and it comes on in a solid way. And then you can choose a couple different options. You can double click and that'll blink it on and off. Single click, you can change the color. It has a couple different colors, red, green, white. And then double click again for just solid on. So this is really cool. This is something that I can see clipping on my saddle when I'm riding, um, just so people see me and they know what I'm doing and they can look out for me. This is the charge um, port here for the USB hookup. 
And this clip is really good. This is the back part of it. It clips into this section here, it just twists in. And then this is the clip that you can put on to stuff. So on your bike, when you're riding at night, when you're running, I do run down on the country roads here. So this would be good to clip on my back or my back of my jacket so people can see me on my saddle on my uh even if i'm trying to just warn somebody that there's something in the way or anything like that it's rechargeable so i don't have to worry about batteries so yeah thanks olight for sending me a couple of these lights um they're really handy anyways um let's get stuff put back together and see how it all looks all right, so here it is, all finished up and put back together. Looking good. I like the hardware she picked. It looks really good with those black grates in this new piece. And the contrast with the whitewash finish looks really nice. So all of the pieces have a little bit of a different tone. And you can only really see that if you look pretty hard, but everything is working together nicely. So I'm happy we got it that far. The base is looking really good. I like the grain on these older pieces, of course, a little bit more than the new piece. I think it looks good with this finish. This is just a little bit more muted, more quiet of a finish even though I did try my darndest to get some color into that grain. It still wasn't as much as the other one, but pretty good. So thanks so much for joining me on this one, guys. I really appreciate you watching my videos and taking the time to comment. Really, really appreciate you guys for that. And thank you so much for all of you who support me on uh, Buy Me A Coffee. If you want to do that again, the link's in the description below this video. And just thank you for watching and joining me on this journey. Have a great day. Cheers.